Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I wanted to take you along today as I looked at the thoracic spinal cord MRI of a person impacted by MS. Hey! Now what you see in front of you here is a side view. The fancy term is a sagittal view. The person is laying down flat here. So this is their back and this is the table they're laying on. Now over here, this is their lung, right? So their neck and is right here and their head's like up above the page, right? This gray thing, this is the thoracic spinal cord. Now we discussed the spinal cord in reference to these things over here. So these blocks that you see, these are bones called vertebral bodies. And this is the first thoracic vertebral body. Now there's 12 of these. And so it's T1 for the first thoracic one and T2, T3, T4, all the way down to T12. And so we can talk about the spinal cord in reference to these vertebral bodies. Now, by the way, if you notice in between the vertebral bodies, you see these intervertebral discs. And if you've heard of someone having a bulge disc or a slip disc, basically this spongy thing squirts out this way and it pushes on this thing, the spinal cord. Now today we're gonna to be looking at this thoracic spinal cord. And as you just look up and down it, you notice that there are parts that are very dark gray, like right here. And then there are parts that are quite light or white, right where my cursor is. You also notice that at this section, it's thinner. And this is an area where there's an MS plaque or lesion, where there's been damage to the thoracic spinal cord. And we see several of these, we see them here, we see one here, I see one here. But in reality, this view doesn't give you the most ability to pick up the lesions. In order to do that, we need to actually look at two views. So what I'd like to do now is split the page and bring a second image of the spinal cord into view. This is the same person, the same spinal cord, just a different cut or slice. This is a top-down view. The fancy term is called an axial image. So if you imagine with me that we uh, chop the spinal cord right here at that blue line, okay, so we like chop the person in half, we chop the spinal cord, and we look down on top of it, that's the cross-sectional area, all right? Or if you think of this as a hot dog that you chop, that's the circle you're looking down on. And just to orient yourself, let me make this picture smaller, this is a human being, and this is their back, so you can see this is the skin of their back. They're laying on the table. So this over here correlates with this over here. And this is the, therefore the back of their spinal cord called the dorsal section, dorsum being Latin for back. And over here, this is their stomach. And so this is uh, the front section, the stomach section called the, the ventral section, ventre being uh, Latin for stomach or front. So this is the front and the back. This is the right side and this is the left side. And I'm going to make this a lot bigger just to make it easier on us. So I'm zooming in on it. Now what we're going to do, and if you follow the blue line, is we're going to go up to the top and we're going to walk down the spinal cord. And where you see the blue line is where I am. My eyes are going to be over here and I'm looking at this structure right here, the spinal cord and cross section, this gray structure, and I'm looking to see if there's white inside of it. And if so, what is the pattern? And what you'll see with me is that there's a bunch more lesions than what we pick up only looking over here. So here at T2, we see this white signal taking up most of the cord. Here it's nice and gray, and then it gets white right there, and then it gets gray again. That's concerning for an MS lesion. Here, we see that just the right section has become white. And so there's a lesion at T3, which is right of center, and we're not even seeing it over here. Now, if we look at the side view and we kind of skim back and forth, I'm not really seeing it much. And that's why looking at the axial view is so, the axial, this top-down view is so helpful. Here again, I see a bright spot. I see one here. And we anticipate that we're coming up on a big one here at T4. And sure enough, there is the beginning of it. 
and we're watching it right here. It's quite long. So it goes from here all the way down to here. And you can see how extensive it is. Now the fact that it's atrophic or shrunk tells you that this is probably not a new lesion. That's not the best way to tell, it's just a comment that you can make. And it also tells you that the inflammation was so severe that it ate away at the tissue. And after uh, the inflammation died down, there was less tissue left, and so it was damaged. And you can see that in the way that it appears on the MRI. So here we see a white area there. This spinal cord is heavily affected here at T6, we're seeing a lesion. And here we see that a good section of the spinal cord, now it's on the left-hand side, is affected at T7. Here we see a small lesion left of center at T8. And we're not done yet. We see a lesion which is in the anterior and left portion, so this white thing which is at T8, coming down. Look right here, if you will, guys, at T10, and you see that white spot right there. And we're gonna bring our cursor right down, so if you look at that blue line, we're gonna bring it right on top of it. And when we're right, right on top of it, this is white. Now look what happens if we go up a level. We're above it, and now it's no longer white. And if we go below it, it's no longer white. So we're picking up that lesion, cutting through. And at the bottom, again, an area of significantly white. So now we've gone through the T2 sequences, these um, sequences uh, based on water where we can see the lesions. And the next assessment that I would like to make is to look and see if any of them are enhancing, if they light up after the administration of contrast. Now this would be very helpful because if we saw that it was enhancing, it would tell us that those lesions are new as we're taking the MRI images. So now I've kept the same side view on the left and top-down view on the right, but this is after the administration of contrast. And so we have our numbers here so that you can kind of see, but you see that the picture looks different. And I can already tell you, looking down this side sagittal view, that I see no enhancing lesions. But of course, we want to confirm that by scrolling down the top-down view. Now, you may be saying, Aaron, the, the picture looks less clear, and all this up here looks less clear, but I'm looking right here, and all I'm looking for is a really bright spot. And I don't mean subtle, I mean like super bright. And so as I scroll down here, I'm reassured that I'm not seeing anything. Now, take a look really carefully. Let me, I don't know if I can make this bigger without ruining it for us. See these bright spots? Those are blood vessels that are on the outside of the thoracic spinal cord, but there's no enhancement in the spinal cord. And we would have a really big glowing white spot like a Christmas tree light bulb, which we very fortunately do not see. So based on this, I would assess that the thoracic spinal cord has significant burden of disease, T2 burden of disease, those bright spots, but fortunately there are no new enhancing lesions and there's at least one area of atrophy or shrinkage. I would also comment that the discs don't look to be bulging and I see no significant degeneration of the bones. And so you may ask, well, what kind of symptoms might we expect for someone who has uh, thoracic spinal cord lesions? And you may see numbness from the level where it occurs down. So if it occurred at this level, we would expect potentially numbness from here down, particularly if it involved the back side of the spinal cord. If the front side of the spinal cord was affected, we may expect to see weakness from this level down. So for example, in one leg or the other, or in one foot or the other. Also, if you have a thoracic spinal cord injury or lesion, you can develop difficulties with the down there's, bowel, bladder, and sexual function. If you'd like to learn more about MRIs and MS, please click the video that's on your screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and as always, thank you for learning about MS with me. And until my next video or my next live stream, be safe and take care.